Okay, traders, welcome to today's first market analysis session with me, Patrick Manley. Um, I just want to do a quick audio test. Uh, you should be able to see a tick mill welcome screen. Um, if you can see that and you can hear me loud and clear, can you type a Y in the chat box, please? Good stuff. Okay, well, let's... Uh, Let's get the show on the road. So before we get started, obviously, as always, we, uh, we must adhere to the risk disclaimer. Um, I'm sure most of you are aware by now the risks involved with foreign exchange trading. And um, joining in these educational sessions and these analysis sessions are helping you uh, to mitigate some of those risks by um, learning from uh, more experienced market practitioners. Um, before I jump into today's analysis just to give you a quick heads up on who i am for those who are here for the first time uh, my name is patrick manley i'm a fund manager a mentor and um, a market com commentator um, i've been trading in the markets for 15 years um, when i first started out i experienced what uh what i can only describe as a uh, some pretty instant success and then a, a horrific loss and um, I decided to take uh, take trading more seriously as sort of as a mentor. Um, worked with him to develop not just my technical but also my mental game. And um, through working with him over a period of eighteen months to two years, really, I uh, I came back to the markets with a, a fully documented trade plan, back tested and forward tested, and um, and actually came back to the markets in uh, in January of two thousand and eight and um, experienced the, uh, what was a, a wild ride really of, uh, of Boeing 09. Not dissimilar really to what we're experiencing today, but I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, along with being a, uh, along with managing my, my own money and um, investor money, I also am the head of trading and trader education for a leading online education firm called FX Career Swap, uh, whereby we take uh, emerging retail trading talent. We uh, we arm them with um, proven strategies, some of which I'm going to discuss and, and talk about today. Um, and once they uh, are through the development phase, we actually uh, we give them a, a funded account to to trade at zero um, personal risk. Uh, I'll talk more a little bit more about that uh, towards the end of today's session. <clears throat> um, but really what I guess we want to, to move on to now is, is talking about the, the current market context. Um, if, we, if we're new to this uh, in terms of uh, the markets or um, trading uh, in general, uh, it can be pretty daunting when you, uh, when you get involved in markets that are moving at the rate of, uh, of change that we're seeing at the moment. And, What's important to do in these times is to is really to, to take a step back almost and to, to get some perspective on, on where we are from a, uh, a market narrative and a thematic point of view, and also then where we are from a technical and structural point of view. Because once you can take that step back and get a, an idea of a bigger picture, then that better arms you in terms of making uh, technical or, or transactional trades um, in the near term. So what I want to do today basically is walk through the key charts that I'm tracking at the moment. And, um, and what I'm starting with here uh, as we go through this is actually the monthly charts. Now, um, certainly I don't trade or, or initiate trades um, on the monthly charts. But what I do is I use that, that time frame, the monthly time frame, to identify the likely or the, the probable path of price action. And in doing that, I'm then able to use that information and feed that in as an input to my trading process um, when, on, on my trading timeframe. For me, most of the trades I'm, I'm executing on a daily timeframe, I do some intraday trading, but like I say, mainly it's on, on the daily timeframe. Um, and certainly in these market conditions, those the, the daily charts help to really um, X out some of the noise that we're seeing in the markets. You know, we're seeing some 
some pretty uh, volatile uh, conditions at the moment. And by stepping back and trading on that daily time frame, I'm able to, uh, to reduce the noise aspect and adhere to my trading process. And ultimately, what, what, what is going to define your success um, as a trader is having that trade plan in place because that trade plan is the bedrock and foundation of being able to um, participate in the markets on a long term perspective. You know, if you're looking to, to build a, a meaningful um, portfolio and, and develop your accounts, then you know, you, you're in this for the long haul. Um, and so having that trade plan in place is, is like I say, is the, is the bedrock and foundation for that um, progression. And it also removes the sense of emotion. So clearly at the moment, what we're experiencing in the markets is a, is a huge amount of uh, emotion based upon this rapid moves. We're also under the additional stress of the uh, the, the human impact with respect to, to the coronavirus, obviously, and, um, and as such, we're getting bombarded really in, uh, from both directions. Not only is there a, a human aspect, but there is also significant and um, developing um, financial and economic elements. But our job as, as a trader, as professional traders, is to, to set that stuff aside and focus on the process. Because in these periods of volatility, um, once we've got this, once we're through the initial panic phase, and you know, at this point it appears that we're still in that. Um, once we do, and it, and we, it would, we are potentially forming some type of, I think, um, potential reaction uh, point here in the markets. We're seeing a huge amount of stimulus being issued on a global coordinated scale almost, and that should help underpin. Um, some type of uh, some type of relief recovery in the in the first instance, but this this dislocation that we've seen with this volatility um, means that the the reaction that we see is unlikely to 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 meaningfully shift what has now become or, or what is is in the process of becoming new dominant trends. We've over the past two years we've experienced a crash in volatility. You know, markets have almost stagnated. And now we've got this impact, this initial blow um, from the explosion in volatility. And what tends to happen in these type of environments is that dislocation means that big players in the market ultimately are going to need to reposition and reallocate capital to ultimately take advantage of these, um, of these, new, of new, of these new environments um, with respect to uh, trading opportunities. So what we're looking to do as, as retail traders is try as best we can to align ourselves uh, with these, these bigger players in the market. And so in, in looking at these, these monthly charts as we're going to go through now, you'll see that there's, a, there's certainly an emerging theme now. And, um, you know, certainly on these, what I'd be looking for now is a couple of uh, weekly close. We're, good, we're probably going to get a couple of daily closes um, through some key levels. Once we get that that two day confirmation for me, then um, then we can we can start to act on this on this in, in this new environment and look to capitalize on like I say what I anticipate will be um, you know sustained uh, trending environments uh, for the next six, 12, 18, 24 months. So what we're going to start with here is um, is the dollar index. Uh, this is a chart going back to the um, to the 1980s, so we're, we're seeing the, the scale in terms of the dollar, the, the prior moves. Because what we what what happen, what what's happening in this in this current phase is we're seeing this initial explosion, and it's it's putting it's you know it's putting players offside. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to um, react initially react to this type of price action because what you what what it tends to do is it tends to create a, a sense of panic. Um, but the reality is that if you look at this monthly chart, you can see we've seen equivalent moves over the years. So we're not actually seeing, although the velocity is, is, is something to, um, to consider, the, actually, the actual scale of the moves we're seeing in the market at the moment are not outside of historical norms. 
Okay, so what we want to do, or, or one of the parts of my, my process when I'm analyzing the markets, is I want to take the current price action in consideration to historical patterns. Because we can, if we can align what's happening now with, with scenarios um, of similarity in history, we can then start to forward plan and forward think as to where price is likely to go. And then once we've got that market map in place, um, from a strategic perspective, then tactically we can trade around that idea. Um, you know, there the, the will be, even if, even if I think the dollar is, is, is breaking out and, and we're going to see a, a new phase of, of sustained dollar strength, there are going to be periods in there of natural correction versus what I think is an, uh, is, is an emerging dominant trend. And so my structural view it gives me the, the, the sense of direction, which is almost like my compass, and then tactically I trade around that view. But certainly when I get set up in line with a structural perspective, then those are the trades I'm looking to, to, to capitalize on and hold um, to deliver uh, outlier returns versus what I would normally expect from a, from a pattern or a trade or uh, a a signal in the market. So if my if a, if a signal that I'm I'm normally using um, suggests that I can receive you know I can return one and a half or two times my risk, whereby I can now get a signal that aligns with these um, potentially emerging na nascent trends, really, then I can think to myself, well, in this you know because I'm aligned with that um, strategic perspective, then there's the possibility here of maybe uh, five, seven, or even ten times risk rewards. Um, for the guys who, who, who know me, I've, I've, during the explosion in, in volatility in 2014, so uh, this was the last time we came out of such a, of a, a significant um, volatility crush, um, which was this, this period here in terms of the dollar where we took off to the upside. Um, this offered fantastic trading opportunities. And for me personally, um, it was, was, was my best year. Um, in terms of trading. So what I'm looking to do now is if if, if the market confirms what I believe um, we're about to see, then I'm certainly going to be looking over these, these coming weeks and we're going to be ho holding these sessions on a weekly basis. So you'll see how I, I progress things from my personal trading perspective. Um, obviously, I'm not, get, I'm not issuing uh, trading advice whatsoever, but from my personal trading perspective, I'm just demonstrating how for a, a professional trader um, will play Play these markets as they develop, you'll be able to see how um, how I progress with that. So let's just move in and, and take a closer look at the dollar. So we've got this um, this monthly trend line in the dollar that um, that I've been watching. I've I posted uh, several charts on the on the Titmore blog about this, and it appears now we're going to take this trend line out. We've got additional support for this for for, for further upside acceleration. By the fact that the RSI stochastic has tested down, and this is on a month, you know, this is on a monthly scale, has tested down to this 20 level and is now popping to the upside. So we've these these lines now in terms of the RSI stochastic are, are doing what I call positive divergence. So this is supporting from a momentum perspective, from the sentiment perspective, I use something called the psych indicator, which is really just an, an advanced version of the RSI, but that is also giving bullish signals. Um, if we can get if, if we get a if we get a, a weekly if, if this week we close above this trend line, um, this is the end of day data. In a minute, I'll go move on to um, to the daily chart, and we can see exactly where we are at the moment. But if we get a close above here, the next target is going to be this 103.70 area, these prior cycle highs in 2016, and ultimately, then what I've been looking for will be a test of this um, projected descending trend line resistance up to 106. Now, what I like to do is, um, is mirror or look for mirror, mirroring price patterns. So in terms of what I've got here, it would appear now that we've got, you can see the similarities in terms of this move correcting here. And then, like I say, we're getting this acceleration. So if that's going to, to play out, what we can then look for is some type of symmetry in the market patterns. Now, you'll see today we, we're going to close above <coughs> this trend line, it looks like anyway, and certainly then we'll be watching for the weekly close, but 
two-day close will be sufficient. So you can see how um, just from in terms of replicating this prior scale move that we could easily be trading up towards this 120 area, which again are just these prior highs. So although this, although it seems like, you know, if you're if you're on an intraday chart, these moves are, are, are you know are, are massive. The reality is we're, we're we're only just getting going, and we're just replicating in terms of scope and scale prior price patterns, and we're still ultimately then trading within a much bigger range. So even if we got this run up to 120. Um, we'd still only be trading within the the twenty year range that we put in place. Now, what we can also see here is the similarity in terms of this bottoming action and this extension and this bottoming action. Admittedly, we've seen some consolidation here, but if we look again in terms of thinking of scope and scale versus historical norms, then we can also give ourselves. another target which points in terms of replicating the scope and scale of this leg over here um, puts us up at 113. So there's so immediately here now although we're, we're, we're trading uh, let's go, we'll pop onto the daily chart now. So on the daily chart, we're now trading 102. So the initial objective here now is that we are likely to test this 103.89. From here, we may, might see a pause and, um, and some type of pullback. We also want to be cognizant of the fact that, is anyone else, sorry, is anyone else having an issue with the sound? Okay, uh, one second. Okay, um, sound okay, okay, fine. So the initial objective here with the dollar index now is for a test of this um, this 103.80 area. And like I say, from there, we could see a pullback to retest this broken trend line as support. So it's acting as resistance. And now as we trade through it, we could anticipate that we could see this trend line um, ultimately act as, as some support in a snapback move. Now, um, one of the issues we want to be cognizant of, as we're seeing these, these, these moves develop at, um, at a significant pace, is the potential for some type of central bank uh, coordinated uh, commentary about the US dollar, about US dollar strength. There's certainly the potential of the G7 um, central bankers making some type of uh, or trying some type of verbal intervention in the markets. So that it's that type of thing that will create the opportunity to align with the trend because um, historically, any when a central bank has tried to intervene in the market like that, it has a short term impact. Okay, so it creates a bit of whipping, a, a whippiness in the market. It will stop a, a bunch of people out, but ultimately, it, they haven't unless they're going to suspend trading in foreign exchange markets, which you know they could do, but at this stage uh, it doesn't appear to be on the cards, any intervention from the central banks will simply be an opportunity um, to tactically then align with the, the strategic view on, uh, in terms of the price patterns. So what I've been looking for is a, a test of this 103, some type of corrected pullback. And again, what I want to do when I'm thinking about um, corrections is simply look at, at you know prior moves. So if we test up into this 103, um, something you know, an equivalent uh, correction would um, would have us back into in you know retesting the trend line, and then we could uh, we could easily look at the potential then to take off again, and then we'd be up testing this this bigger trend line uh, up towards 110. And like I said, what I'm ultimately looking for if this if this pattern is going to play out, we're going to get these confirmations with a two-day close above this trend line. Um, I think we're going to see a move up to 113. And remember, 113 is only replicating the scope of this move that we saw here um, back in the mid 90s. So there's nothing, uh, you know, it's it, historically it's within range. Okay. So 
Watching to see how we trade when we test that, that 103 area. Um, but at this stage, looking at the position of the RSI stochastic and the way it's orientated, the positive um, divergence, any pullback from here, whilst certainly there, there might be a tactical trade, and I'll, I'll talk you through that on the daily charts in a minute, um, the reality is at this stage with the, 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 the ferociousness of this dollar bid, the pullbacks will, be, uh, will likely be shallow now and we uh, will trade higher. So what I'm looking for is, like I say, 103 is the first marker. See how we trade when we when we get to that level in terms of pullback. But ultimately, I'd be looking for for higher prices and the uh, symmetry move would give us. Let's just pull that in. Give us a trade up into this through this trend line and ultimately to 113. 50. Now that is, that isn't necessarily all going to happen in a straight line, that may do given current conditions, but those are the targets. So you've got price markers versus historical norms. So you're not, you know, I'm not saying that uh, the dollar is going to 200 overnight. What I'm simply doing is I'm using prior price patterns to suggest the probable price of current price action. Okay. So that's the view on the, the dollar index at the moment. Um, the other thing to consider with the dollar, and I, I shared this with the, the guys I work with, is, um, is that we do have, from a seasonal perspective, a seasonal perspective suggests that we could see a dollar peak into the end of March. Now, in light of the current dynamics in terms of um, the cross currents with the coronavirus and the, imp and the economic implications of that, um, I, I personally play, I place less importance on the seasonality, but I still want to be cognizant of it. Because if the trade into that 103 coincides with the end of March, like I say, tactically, I could get a signal to, to go short the dollar. Um, and I want, to be, I want to be cognizant of the potential for seasonality to have some type of um, bearing in the place. So we want to watch this, this line showing that over the past 20 years, the dollar has had a tendency to put in a, a tradable top, certainly, if not a, a peak for the year, in and around the end of March. Okay, so I want to be cognizant of that because when we get up into this 103, or if we're up testing this trend line at 110 by that point, then that seasonality could, have, could come to bear on the market. Okay. So let's look um, at the other, another key chart that's really driving things at the moment, and this is the, uh, the S&P 500. Um, we are sitting on the monthly trend line from the 2009 lows. Okay. We've yet to see a daily close below that trend line. So let's go to the daily chart here. So you can see we've been sitting on it. We breached it on an intraday basis, but you can see we quickly closed back above it. So if we are going to see a relief rally, like I said, you know, the, the, there are conditions in place at the moment that would suggest this would be a logical place from where we might see some type of bounce. Certainly, we're getting that coordinated um, fiscal stimulus, and we uh, and we're now seeing um, daily closes back above this trend line. So we breached it intraday. So we run the stops that would have been sitting there um, from. Uh, from traders, we've run those stops, reversed, and we've closed back within the within the trend line. So certainly, from a, a trading perspective, we could see a, a, a sizable bounce here in the markets. And again, note um, note the term there. I, 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 this this I think is the first leg of at least a, uh, a three wave correction. So again, what I want to think about in terms of scope and scale is where that bounce could could take us to. And we can see here that uh, just looking at that last leg up into the cycle high, if we replicated that price action down here, that would take us back into these, these lows here. It would also uh, coincide with, if we um, bring in the FIB retracement tool, it would actually sit pretty much at 50% retracement 
of this of the decline that we've seen so far and we also have the um, like i say this these prior lows sitting here so likely from a structural perspective we look left on our charts to see where um, the price is leaving its its footprint this will be a logical level so we could easily see a bounce if we can we can hold this trend line certainly on a weekly closing basis there's um the situation to, uh, on friday whereby um it's called quadruple witching whereby a lot of options contracts are settled um on friday and uh, and this that could actually be the catalyst and also i noted in uh, in the piece yesterday that a lot of um, commodity trading advisors and big hedge funds have have covered their long positions now liquidated their long positions and for the first time have just turned net short on the market so if we think about the market as as a, a mechanism by where um, by way that uh, what it's looking to do is extract most amount of money um, from most of the people involved in the market, then the idea that these these guys have just got short into this trend line support would set from a positioning and flow perspective would be the ideal catalyst as well to um, to drive this push higher. So I'm I'm personally looking to see um, if we can get a close above above a, the near term VWAP to actually position um, for the first time on the long side. Uh, in these in these equity markets to play for a bounce. I'm not, certainly I'm, I, I'm not suggesting in any way, shape or form that this is the low. Um, like I said, what I'm anticipating at this stage is that this will be a reaction low. Um, and, and what you've got to bear in mind, e even in bear markets, and this is what makes them so incredibly difficult to trade, is that you experience throughout the, the process vicious rallies. So it makes it very difficult for people to stay net short for an extended period of time because the rallies uh, really shape the confidence of those shorts. But ultimately, what what you you've got now is you've got a situation whereby it would, uh, the, you know, on a, from a balance of probabilities perspective, it's less likely that we're going to see uh, new highs from from this level. What's more likely is that we've got to actually now um, see another leg lower. And let's just take this back out uh, one second, guys. <clears throat> this goes in a weekly here and get some perspective. So if we do see, we, we get the bounce from the, one second. One second. <clears throat> Let me just realign that. Okay. So, I mean, we can get this bounce back into this area then I'd be expecting ultimately that we are going to see another leg lower. And that next leg lower will be the, the, the washout move that should form then the base for a, you know, a, 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 the next leg up, basically. So what I'm anticipating is that we can trade back up into this 2000, uh, 2800 to, to 3000 level, and then I think we're going to get the next washout to the downside. Because what you've got to remember, although this we've got this huge amount of uh, stimulus in place uh, and and being added to almost on a daily basis now is that we've yet to experience what are called the second round effects. So at the moment we're just getting this headline panic scenario, um, but what we what's coming down the pike in the next four to six weeks once we've had this relief rally, we're going to see a deluge of, of dire data, dire economic data, and that's what we're really. Uh, that's what should should cap this relief rally and ultimately see us take this next leg down. So I mean, it would it's easily conceivable that we're down testing this 1800, these prior lows, and potentially even these two tops here uh, back down to 1400. Um, so what we'll be watching is we're watching the DNA of the rally. What we'd anticipate is that would be a three-wave move into uh, into this resistance area, which will then set up and the, the, the really the, the the premium selling opportunity, um, because that uh, will we'll have clear, uh, we'll get a clear signal on that, and then be looking to to be short for a re certainly for a retest of, of the current lows. But more likely than not, we're going to see an equidistant swing develop um, before we <coughs> move higher here. So um, again, well, in a minute, I'll look. At, I'll show you the daily charts, um, and we'll look at where the opportunity is for uh, for trying to to play for that relief rally.
The second with the euro. So the euro, as with uh, the dollar, the euro is sitting right on this trend line. Uh, similar to the dollar, you can see here that the RSI stochastic has rolled over and is now negatively diverged. And um, what we can anticipate here is that we, we take out uh, this trend line support. That would set up a rapid retest of 103, um, which will coincide with the dollar index obviously testing its prior peaks. Um, and then we'd see where we head from there. What we've got with, it, with this, even with the euro here, you can see is um, we can measure prior declines. So we have this move here. And then we get a symmetry swing target. So that would take us just down below parity in the euro. If we take out this trend line, once we're through the 103, then we're looking at 97 on the downside. We can also see <coughs> that we have this decline as well. So these are the last three major declines. So that would bring us just shy. So that would have us testing just ahead of parity at 101. And we also have this measurement, which is um, what I refer to as an equidistant swing. So you can start to see how we're getting a cluster here between the 97 level and, and the 101. So it's likely that um, if we get a close below this trend line, and again, we'll be looking at the daily chart shortly, then um, we're looking for a quick test of 103.50 and then into this support area here. Um, if we bring in the FIBS as well from this move, as you can see, we have that 78.6% retracement coming in at 98. 90. More often than not, once we trade through that 78.6% retracement, <clears throat> then we're likely to, then the potential is set up that we'd be retesting um, the lows back in, uh, going back when the euro was basically formed. So, um, so we're watching this, this, this trend line is incredibly important for the euro. If we take this out, like I say, 103.50 next, and then we've got to look down to this support area as, uh, as the next objective on the downside. You can see again what we're using is these historical uh, measurements in terms of prior declines to give us a guide as to the probable uh, as to the probable path of price um, in the current scenario. So that's the euro. Let's quickly check in with the sterling here. <coughs> now we can see with uh, sterling we have an equidistant swing objective which would take us down through parity. Um, we've already taken out the major trend line. We, we, we respected it on the first test, hot tire, but we've since gone through there. The next trend line support area is coming in around this um, 112, 113 handle. So we could, this could be another area whereby we could see a bounce, certainly on the daily charts. Again, this is a monthly chart. So we could see a bounce on the daily chart, but ultimately I think any pullbacks into 120 now will be sold. Um, because there'll be a huge amount of, uh, of unfinished business in terms of orders that, uh, that of guys who've been, who are holding loss-making positions at the moment, and they're praying to God that they get back to, to break even, and when they do, there'll be, uh, there'll be natural sellers in the market, and then you'll also have uh, fresh sellers coming in at this broken uh, support now acting as resistance. So in terms of the natural flow in the market, there you're getting a natural um, process of, of, of sell side flow in this, uh, this 120 area. So if we do try back to 120, <coughs> certainly on the daily charts, we're looking for um, signals on the on the short side, watching in in terms of the, the counter trip move, watching that 112, 50, 113 area. Um, but certainly you can see here, A, B, C, D would have us down through parity. Um, and you can see further, let's just, that's of interest. So you've got that much bigger move, which uh, if that completes would, uh, would be pretty significant, taking the pound sterling down to 72 uh, pence on the dollar. So first point of call is gonna be this trend line support. 112.50, If we get a bounce up into the 120s, like I said, I would expect that to uh, to find uh, to find that natural sellers in around that 120 area. 
and um, and from there we'd look for a, certainly a test of a potential down to, to parity um, with the dollar. Dollar yen, you can see we're in a uh, putting in a big bullish reversal here. We've been consolidating. Whilst we hold this 99.27 area, then the next target on the upside is going to be 119.120. And if we break out there on a closing basis, then uh, we could be heading up to, to the range highs here, um, going back over the last 20 years again. So thinking in terms of the dollar index and the euro, we're, we're still talking about moving just within 20-year ranges. So although you know that although that's significant, we're not moving in reality outside of historical norms. So this is something to remember in terms of if once these once markets start to trend like this, people uh, people are reluctant to, to trade with the trend and they're permanently trying to to fade the move. Whereas um, what you want to be doing in this type of environment, as we've got this increase in volatility now is as best as can you want to be aligning with these these trends and um, and that's where the real money is going to be made over the next six to 12 months let's check in with the swissy similar scenario here you can see we've tested down into this support area on uh from the rsi stochastic perspective we're just about to cross over to the upside um, certainly we can anticipate to move up to to 117 um, but if we look even here at this last advance <coughs> of note we could easily be trading up to as high as 140 obviously there are going to be pit stops along the way but in terms of just getting your head around the potential um, for the scale of move here it's important to have these markers in your or certainly you know on a weekly basis to be checking in with these charts just so that you can see the bigger picture because it when you're trading if you're trading intraday or you know you're trading on these daily charts you can it's easy certainly in, in this environment to lose lose that perspective but you know these are potentially big bigger trend opportunities to really take advantage of let's check in with the loony <clears throat> so i mean testing uh 147 seeing some profit taking here but again look at this positive divergence on the RSI stochastic and um, and certainly in terms of in terms of just the, the trend line here that we could see in terms of this current slope we could certainly see a move up to 150 um, more than achievable at this stage we also have a b c d which would take us up through the 160 highs. So that's so all we're doing, all we're thinking about here is replicating the move we saw, you know, this last this 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 move from uh, from 2011 up to 2016. So the, you know, this is just replicating a five-year range. So it see, you know, it, it it seems crazy to think about this, but the reality is this, you know we're still just moving within historical norms at this stage okay so we're, we're you know we're not we're not even out, out of sample here this is just you know replicating the last five years moves uh kiwi taking out that major trend line we, we uh, again tested it third test like i said to the guys in uh, who work with me the third test of any trend line tends to be respected but when you get that fourth hit those are the ones that um that that tend to fail, and that's certainly what we're we're seeing at the moment. So, in terms of of giving ourselves some targets, or we just have to look at. So we're sitting right on from the Kiwi here, right up on the two, two the 0809 move to the downside, and we bounced. So we want to pay attention to that. You can see again if we look at the scope. 2008 2009 we just replicated that move that we saw in the late 90s and we're doing it again now and we're getting a bounce so the, you know the, this the, the market you know the market displays a degree of memory and certainly the guys were you know moving around significant chunks of cash and not trading on a five-minute chart 
They're looking at the daily, weekly, and monthly charts. So these, these levels are often respected because of the, the scale of the capital that's paying attention to the time frame. Okay. So for now, um, until we get a close below this, this symmetry move, then um, there's the potential we could see a bounce here in the Kiwi. And if you think about the idea of a, a you know, the the few, the S&P 500 holding that support and the Kiwi generally being considered a, a risk barometer, then you know, if we get a bounce in the in the in the risk markets, in the equity markets, then that could lead to to a bounce here in terms of the Kiwi. So we want to pay attention to that. But ultimately, <clears throat> we've got another measured move to the downside, A, B, C, D. So once we take out this symmetry, once we take out 55 and move down to test the 0809 lows would, would seem to be in the cards. We've also got the RSI stochastic gain, like I say, rolling over, negatively diverging. We're not seeing, uh, we're, you know, we've got bearish sentiment. So any bounces here in this Kiwi um, at this stage <laughs> would certainly be selling opportunities. So check in with the Aussie. So I mean, the Aussie has this big broadening pattern here, a megaphone pattern. You know, the downside objective here of 31 cents on the dollar. <laughs> Where are we at the moment? Well, we're moving in this uh, in this parallel. We've got some uh, trend line support here at the 55 level. And again, if we're going to see this bounce in, in risk markets, the Aussie will more, more likely than not benefit from that. But what we've got to remember is that second round effect. So even if we do see a bounce here, what's more likely than not is that over the coming weeks, uh, the Australian Economic data is going to be pretty dire. Uh, they've had the bushfires, and now they've got the impacts of coronavirus. Um, so again, what we'd be looking for are, are selling opportunities um, on the on the daily time frame. So we're, we're pausing here at the moment, but uh, you know, more likely than not, we're going to see we'll see a correction if we're going to get that correction in the equity markets. And that again will provide a, another selling opportunity. Check in with gold. Gold, big tweeze at top here on the uh, on the monthly chart. This does not bode well for gold. Uh, we have an A, B, C, D. So I mean, we could be down trading sub one thousand dollars of gold here. RSI stochastic rolling over, negatively diverged, bearish pin bar, and then a bearish outside reversal. Obviously, we have to see where we close, but I mean, if we close out the month below 1440 in gold, then um, we certainly would be looking at, uh, at this trend line getting a retest. Uh, again, this is all going to happen next week, although it feels like it. In, uh, in terms of the current market moves, but you know, we're, there's gonna be backing and filling along the way, but ultimately, whilst this high is respected, then technically we, we can easily anticipate a test of this trend line support, and more likely than not, um, significantly lower if we're going to respect this ABCD pattern. Finally, crude oil, obviously being devastated. Um, Certainly, ten dollars, ten to twelve dollars, uh, looks like a, an easy uh, downside of objective. Um, and interestingly, it's that twelve dollar area, which is where the Saudis um, below twelve dollars is where the Saudis would actually be losing money on producing oil. So, from a historical perspective, obviously uh, that hasn't happened. But um, drilling, you, you know the. Uh, the costs now aligned with um, getting oil out of the ground and, and, and exporting it are about $12. So we want to pay attention. We're going to trade $22. We've got a trend line coming in here at $13. So what we what we could easily anticipate now, and certainly with this, uh, you know, the Russia 
and Saudi standoff is that you know we could see that move down to test the production costs in crude oil. And from there, again, we might see more meaningful balance, but certainly um, that would appear to be the downside objective now with oil. Let's see, just in terms of this. Yeah, so I mean, if we get a close below this trend line here, um, on the yeah, this is monthly, you can look at a weekly close as well, just as valid. Um, if we get a weekly close below there, then we can anticipate we're going to test production costs in oil. So those are, you know, that what I've what I've given you today, guys, is basically a, you know, the the, the bigger picture roadmap for where we are likely to go now, given the current information, given the current um, market thematics that we're seeing and the dynamics. These are the probable paths for price over these coming weeks and months. And so what I'm going to be doing then, uh, starting next week is I'm going to be introducing you to, to how I trade these, these, these market maps in terms of looking at, um, at the price patterns that I trade on the daily charts. So I'll be sharing those, uh, sharing those with you next week. I'm sorry, but we've run a bit over, over time here today. So, um, that'll be for next week. Uh, finally, if, if you want to, uh, um, in the interim, you can follow me on FX Career Swap. Uh, via trading view, uh, I post some, not all of the uh, the charts and setups that I'm watching, but um, I'll try and do more of that. But you can follow me. FX Career Swap is our, our handle there at Trading View. I'll post that in the chat for you. There we go. Um, and then, if any of you are interested in exploring further uh, the opportunities that. Uh, that we offer at FX Career Swap, then um, you can also register here your name, email address, and phone number, and one of our team will be in touch with you uh, to follow up to give you further information about the, the opportunities we give at, uh, at FX Career Swap. Like I say, education um, underpinned by uh, the ability to trade our, our funds at zero financial risk. So uh, feel free to, to check that out, FX Career Swap. Um, I'll put that link in there as well. Can you guys see both of those links in the chat? A Y in the chat box if you can. Make sure you're great. Okay, are there, um, with respect to the charts I've covered today, just these majors, are there any, um, any questions? Like I say, next week we'll get into uh, I'll, I'll get into more of the, the actual uh, technical trade setups on the on the daily time frame that I'm looking to take advantage of. Uh, we've just run a bit over time today, though. Okay, if there aren't any questions at this stage. I'm going to wrap uh, wrap this one up here. And like I say, follow me on TradingView. FX Career Swap is is my handle there. Um, you can also obviously I post through the Ticknell blog and a daily basis you can get email alerts uh, subscribe for for those through um, through the Ticknell site and, um, and like I say maintain perspective is, is really important in these type of environments and ultimately if you haven't got a trading plan in place you shouldn't be trading live live cash in this environment it's absolutely imperative that you have a plan and a process that you're adhering to because it's that that is ultimately going to to make you profitable through this market phase and through the next market phase and through the phase after that so it's incredibly important that you you know that that plan is underpinned by a rigorous risk management strategy because if you're not you don't if you're not managing your risk if you're not trading with stops in the market this it's these type of environments will uh, will see you blow up your account in an afternoon so um Take advantage of, of uh, these sessions over the coming weeks and months to, uh, to see how a professional approaches this. Thanks very much for your time today, guys, and I hope this helped.